Dear fellow truth seekers, thank you and welcome for visiting my channel, Mitha Religio. Mitha Religio is a video channel based on a book series with the same name about religious comparison studies between the stories in Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, and Buddhism, directly from their sacred books and world mythologies, hence the name Mitha Religio. The purpose is to retrace the prehistory of humanity, since I'm not fully satisfied with either the explanations from the point of view of creationists nor evolutionists. There are so many missing links in both explanations. If you feel the same, then you are on the right channel. In this channel, I will also analyze about the prehistory of humanity from the archaeological records, modern scientific point of view, and other alternative theories such as the ancient alien theories and Atlantis or Lemuria legends. After thorough research of circa 30 years, I recognize many, many similarities between all religious stories and even mythologies, and surprisingly, some of them are in accordance or even beyond modern science that have been proven as correct. Thus, I came to the conclusion that all religions must have come from the same source, and all these religious stories and mythologies, although heavily jumbled up, are actually telling one mega story, the true prehistory of our common ancestors. This mega story is quite different than what we have been told to believe and will truly blow your mind as it is more fascinating than our imagination. If you have watched the earlier videos in this channel, I believe you can see some of the similarities too. If you haven't and you truly want to do a religious comparative study, I suggest that you do so. The best way to do a comprehensive religious study via this channel is by watching the videos starting from number one and continue until this present video and so on. That way you will see a clear pattern. In this channel, I will share almost all that I have written in my book series. However, there is one book so far that I cannot share in this channel due to its sensitive, shocking and dark nature and also might be considered controversial to some, but I believe it sheds more light to the above conclusion. If you want to read this around 500 pages ebook with many full color illustrations, you are more than welcome to download book number 5 entitled History of the Dark Side that is available for free in ebook format that can be found in my website www.mythorolegio.com You only have to give your email address and it will be sent to you directly. And no, I won't share your email address nor send any advertisement. The link is in the description box. If you want to get the physical book, kindly go to amazon.com Now let's continue with this week's video. Video number 72 From Mytho Religio, Book 3 Science versus Religion Our Vestigial Organs Proof of Evolution Dear fellow truth seekers, For the last few weeks I have shared with you the scientific theories on the origin of life, i.e. the theory of evolution and the Big Bang Theory, for our religious versus science comparison study. I did this in order to find answers to the questions that are not answered satisfactorily by religion. In my previous videos that are listed in the science playlist, I have shared many topics in the theory of evolution that haven't been answered satisfactorily by science, and in this video I would like to share two more of such topics. The first topic is the concept of vestigial organs which appeared frequently in evolutionist literature as evidence of evolution. Today, this concept has been proven to be invalid but some people still use it as a fact. I did too before I read the information that I'm about to share with you now. Vestigial Organs The concept of vestigial organs was first put forward around a century ago. Supposedly, there existed in the bodies of some creatures a number of non-functional organs. This had been inherited from progenitors and had gradually become vestigial, i.e. forming a small remnant from lack of use. 
However, the whole assumption is quite unscientific and is based entirely on insufficient knowledge. These non-functional organs were in fact organs whose functions had not yet been discovered. The best indication of this was the gradual yet substantial decrease in the long list of vestigial organs. As R. Sketting, an evolutionist himself, concurred with this fact in his article, Do Vestigial Organs Provide Evidence for Evolution, published in the journal Evolutionary Theory. Since it is not possible to unambiguously identify useless structures, and since the structure of the argument used is not scientifically valid, I conclude that vestigial organs provide no special evidence for the theory of evolution. SR Scadding, Evolutionary Theory, Volume 5 The list of vestigial organs that was made by the German anatomist R. Wiedersheim in 1895 included approximately 100 organs, including the appendix and coccyx. As science progressed, it was discovered that all the organs in Wiederheim's list in fact had very important functions. For instance, it was discovered that the appendix, which was supposed to be a vestigial organ, was in fact a lymphoid organ that fought infections in the body, although it is still debatable. Other bodily organs and tissues, the thymus, liver, spleen, appendix, bone marrow and small collections of lymphatic tissue such as the tonsils in the throat and Peyer's patch in the small intestine are also part of the lymphatic system. They too help the body fight infection. The Merck Manual of Medical Information, Home Edition, Merck and Co. Incorporated, the Merck Publishing Group, Rahway, New Jersey, 1997. Here are some of the listed vestigial organs. Coccyx at the lower end of the vertebral column, popularly assumed the leftover of the tail from our monkey ancestors, is not a vestigial organ but provides an attachment for our pelvic organs so that they will not collapse. It was found that the coccyx at the lower end of the vertebral column supports the bones around the pelvis and is the convergence point of some small muscles and for this reason, it would not be possible to sit comfortably without a coccyx. The appendix has now been understood to play an important part in the body's immune system. The tonsils had a significant role in protecting the throat against infections, particularly until adolescence. The semi-lunar fold in the eye has been found in fact to be responsible for cleansing and lubricating the eyeball. There was a very important logical error in the evolutionist claim regarding vestigial organs. As we have just seen, this claim was that the vestigial organs in living things were inherited from their ancestors. However, some of the alleged vestigial organs are not found in the species alleged to be the ancestors of human beings. For example, the appendix does not exist in some ape species that are said to be ancestors of men. The famous biologist H. Enoch, who challenged the theory of vestigial organs, expressed this logical error as follows. Apes possess an appendix, whereas their less immediate relatives, the lower apes, do not. But it appears again among the still lower mammals, such as the opossum. How can the evolutionist account for this? H. Enoch, Creation and Evolution Besides all of this, the claim that an organ which is not used degenerates and disappears over time carries a logical inconsistency within it. Darwin was aware of this inconsistency and made the following confession in The Origin of Species. There remains however this difficulty. After an organ has ceased being used and has become in consequence much reduced, how can it be still further reduced in size until the merest vestige is left, and how can it be finally quite obliterated? It is scarcely possible that disuse can go on producing any further effect after the organ has once been rendered functionless. Some additional explanation is here requisite which I cannot give. Simply put, the concept of vestigial organs contains a number of serious logical flaws and has in many cases been proven to be scientifically untrue.
Dear fellow truth seekers, to me there are more than enough evidence to disprove the validity of the theory of evolution. If you wonder why this theory is still taught in schools and universities, I suggest that you read my fifth book, Mytho Religio, History of the Dark Side, that can be downloaded for free in my website. The link is in the description box. Does this mean that religion is correct, that life on earth, and anywhere else for that matter, if there are life other than on earth, was created by a supreme intelligent being? Based on the lack of evidence in the theory of evolution, I would say yes. Does this necessarily prove that God exists? Is there only one God or are there plural gods? And which religion are we talking about? On the other hand, there are so many missing links and hard to believe stories in religions that we have studied in this channel so far too. Therefore, I think it is time for us to continue with our search for truth by studying other alternative theories concerning the prehistory of life that do not belong to religious teachings and are not accepted by conventional science. I've collected the information from such alternative theories in my fourth book entitled Mytho Religio, Alternative History of the World, Ancient Astronaut, Atlantis and Devolution Theories. I will begin sharing that book up from next week, after I concluded this third book. But for now, allow me to thank you for watching and hope to see you next week.